Okay. Well, you can you can actually Google it and read what I actually reported from Bahrain myself and another seven or eight colleagues of mine from the world media, very respectable uh, journalists, males and females, uh, on actually a Hezbollah cell that was actually arrested in Bahrain, put on trial, and it was not just confession that. Uh, <laughs> can I just, can I, can I, please? Can I just? Uh, I, I want to say thank you to Adel, because he's, he's been brave enough to answer the questions. Let, let, me, let, let me just uh, conclude. Uh, we had a yes, we, yesterday we had a meeting uh, in the other room uh, regarding PVE, preventing violent extremism. And the £140 million pound that is being spent in this country on preventing violent extremism, and most of that is... Uh, on Muslims in this country. <laughs> and we heard from experts uh, that uh, because the government has this fear, and uh, obviously there's evidence that the government has been pressurizing universities to spy on their students, colleges to spy on students, yeah. and schools to sp spy on their uh, children and then report back. Uh, and what comes out of all those is that there's a lot of emphasis that the boys and the girls and the young people should not discuss Middle East and the politics of Palestine and the politics of Israel in school. And, 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 but what I want to say to you is that that's where it comes to. Whenever you talk about regional politics in the Middle East or when you are talking about here. I am not against Israel. But I tell you something, I'm very proud to support the Palestinians and okay. also live in this country. Sure. I think uh, what we are witnessing generally in the rest, the point is specifically Mr. Rastegar raised an important issue about Iran Iraq war and the use of uh, um, nice biological or chemical weapon by the Iraqis. I think the West should establish a more long-term policy if they really want to win hearts and minds in the Muslim world. They cannot change the policy overnight because they like this regime or they don't like that regime. This change doesn't convince anybody to support them when, when even they are right. So I think the Iraqi issue was a very important issue for the Iranians. The Iraqis used, they sat on the same use, possibly, you can say, okay, he got his punishment, but that wasn't really the reason behind it. I think it's very important message that has to go to policymakers in the West that they have to look at the Muslims equal to others. If they are, they've got problems, they tell them exactly on their face the way they are, and they should not be worried that they are called uh, Islamophobia. We have to be very honest and open about it. When there are issues, we have to deal with it. Today we've got problems in Pakistan, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in the sense that Muslims are not convinced, as well as other citizens, I'm not just uh, taking out Muslim but convinced with the way the West is, what the West is saying. They have to be much more honest about it, they have to be much more fair about it. And until we have got that position, the problem, the misunderstanding, the misapprehension, the misconception would exist, whether it's a Palestinian Israeli issue or other issues that we haven't talked about. But I totally agree with you, and when we're talking about democracy, rule of law, human rights, everywhere else, then we should talk about these issues in Saudi Arabia as well. And maybe, maybe Society Outreach can organize the next event on Saudi Arabia. One last word from Vijay, and then we will close. Thank you. Okay, I was just thinking that what we will be doing in the next 15, 20 years, are we going to fight each other the way it's going on now? Yeah. Because the perfect, perfect example is Northern Ireland, where I go again and again to see after 1998 how the peace process is, is, uh, is taking place and how people are living peacefully. Ireland, in some areas you can't even recognize because they have grown so wealthy. Yeah. And people are living peacefully within a very volatile environment. So I was thinking, why can't we have the Northern Ireland peace process into a Middle East peace process, where, where 
because I don't want you to go home and think nothing happened. So, thank you. Thank, so, thank you. Thank you to the panelists. Round of applause. Thank you so much.